Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Hi everyone, welcome to The Advocate and to a lineup of robust and rigorous discussions on the issues that matter to all of us. I'll be setting things off by flagging off the failure of global leadership in the eye of the COVID-19 storm. We'll go virtual as Chuka joins us via Skype to discuss survival as an imperative for change. Survive or perish could be the slogan. I cannot take a look at the herd mentality from an entirely new perspective. Either way, we don't seem to be going far from the COVID cloud. Uche makes an e-jump and appears just in time to remind us of the law of basic instincts that essentially says a hungry man is indeed a very angry man. Liberus drives home Uche's point in a manner of speaking. He holds up the vision that COVID-19 that COVID is bringing out the best in us. Talk about worst case scenarios. So that's the size of the package on this edition. So sit back, it's time to unpack the parcel after this break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. A report card is useful only when the recipients are willing to learn from the mistakes. So today, my advocacy is on the failure of global leadership and the case of economic pandemic, which is, you know, as a result of this COVID-19 uh, coronavirus that's sweeping the whole world. This is not going to be a popular opinion, but I firmly believe that the looming global economic crisis due to the coronavirus pandemic is self-inflicted. I mean, look, this is totally due to the breakdown in global leadership. The world is so deeply connected and, in, and interdependent that no nation, no matter how big or great, can afford to be great again alone. Indeed, from 2015 to 2018, in fact, up to this very moment, we've been witnesses to a rise of nationalist demagogues rising to power all over the world, from Europe to Americas and to Latin America. Politicians whose only claim to power was either to deal with corruption make their country great again, Brexit out of Europe, or get immigrants out. Beyond these, most of these politicians had no other pedigree or competency. In fact, most competency was completely antithetical to their success. They continue to wing their way to political successes. Now, COVID-19, however, requires cool measures, and indeed cool measured hand to steer the ship. The Chinese government, on the other hand, is not totally without blame for the early denial of this virus and their reaction towards the epidemic. However, whilst we must commend their later actions in containing the virus, the horses have already left the van. Indeed, it's been reported that whilst China had full lockdown of Wuhan, it however still allowed travel from Wuhan to other parts of the world, and this seemed to have helped in the spread of the virus. In Europe, especially the United Kingdom and Italy, the, their most cherished freedoms that citizens are used to enjoying provided a weak link which allowed many people to continue to live their lives as normal, 
with travels to and from China and elsewhere. In the United States, which had used to be the world's global policeman and global leader, the age of Trump, however, seemed to have uh, trumped all that. They seemed to focus all their attention in making America great and forgetting that diseases have no borders or barriers, especially in the age of global businesses and jet travel. In my view, the U.S., which used to be the global leader and used to set an example of how countries should get together and fight a global epidemic, abdicated its role, whilst China played ostrich. The role played by previous U.S. presidents is very, quite clear, from George Bush, uh, Mr. Obama, um, in helping to fight previous global uh, crisis, from the 2008 economic crisis to the uh, other pandemics which we've had in 2008, 2009. So here we are today. Without clear remedies, without global leadership, without the support of other nations, without deep coordination, multilateral responses, clearly the world will suffer as we're suffering today. Indeed, we saw stories of U.S. governments allegedly hijacking medical equipment <laughs> that were supposed to go to other countries. Um, and this is not how you fight a global epidemic. So now we're in a situation where it's every, it appears at least, to be every country for itself. And that's not going to work. So this is no way to defeat a deadly viral pandemic, which knows no borders or respects race or ethnicity or the size of your bank account or where you're from. It is a time for regional and global leadership and solidarity. It is the human race which is under attack, and we must come together as one to win this war. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to start by saying I agree with you. Um, I don't think it's going to be an unpopular view, despite what you say. But where I may sort of tweak it slightly is to say, I mean, I wish Uche were here. Because, well, she's here, but she's not physically yeah. here because you, you put her man on the block, uh, <laughs> Trump. Yeah, she may have a thing or two to say about that. But I, I just feel maybe we're looking at, we're blaming the current crop of leadership too much because as far as I can remember, we've always had issues of leadership. So you could say that the current, do you say, nationalist uh, crop uh, as a result of a backlash against the liberals. You know, we, people had had their fill of liberal governments like you know, Obama and people, and they felt that the, the boundaries were being too blurred. So you know, a man can be a woman, all these, kind of, all these advocacies that didn't go, so they wanted to go back to basics. They wanted to reclaim the conservative truths that they knew and understood. So in a way, you sympathize. So it, they were backed by popular demand almost. So yeah, you, know, you can go back as far as communists eras where you had several governments that were you know, the ruling by you know, various ideologies that didn't quite work in favor of the common man. So I don't think you can stop at identifying that we have a crop of leadership that are maybe going in one direction. But I do agree with you, though, that the only way out of this, and I like the way you ended, is to say we must see that this is us against the virus and yeah. not us against ourselves, or we're going to get into a lot of trouble before we get out. You know, and, and I like the fact that you look at regional and national and global, because from, from whether it's our local governments to anybody who is taking the, the lead now must understand that it's not about them, but about the people around them. No, but the, the, the difference is that, um, from your position, Ikene, is the fact that um, from what I think America is saying is, if these leaders had taken time decisions, yeah. we probably would have gotten where to are, no, where we are I today. Agree with that, yes. If China had admitted from the onset and while you're locking down Wuhan, there shouldn't be uh, ingress and egress. Yes. And, and so, and nobody would have been able to leave Wuhan or take the disease or the virus from yes. Wuhan to yes. other part no, of the country. Right. Mm. If America had taken the decision to lock down America when they needed to, they wouldn't have had the influx of the virus, you know, that they have today. If Nigeria had taken this decision to lock down the country, when we needed to lock down, because we kept dilly dallying, uh, um, you, you know. So, but for me, I. I so, I, let me I, just interject a bit to say yes, I agree with you, but my point being that the only reason we didn't expose the other eras, their leadership, is because they never faced a COVID 19. No, they did. No, no, they faced. You know, we, we had the bad flu. The H5N1. I, okay. and, and their decisions were what saved oh, yeah. the day. Yeah, I, yes. I think, yes, there was, there, was, there yes. was global leadership at that point in time. Look, and they were, in much, they were um, acting in much more quickly. Yes, let me, yes. Let me, let me, okay. let me finish, please. Yeah. Do you know that if we had locked down, let's take Nigeria for example, if we had locked down Nigeria when we needed to, there wouldn't have been any need locking down Lagos or asking people to stay at home mm. because we would have remained in Lagos and do our business or how we needed to do it. Yeah. Or you take the step, a uh, uh, decision of what Tanzania had done, knowing fully where that you already have it, mm. you now 
uh, uh, create a strategy where people who are coming in will be forced to quarantine, quarantine, not self quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a facility Imposed, yes. to quarantine them for 14 days before you. But our borders were open. The same thing with US. The same thing with Europe. Yeah. And and so and then the same denier from China. And so by the time it became full blown. You know, even the World Health Organization kept denying, yes. no, it's not yet um, a pandemic. We should not, um, uh, uh, they shouldn't be, there shouldn't be panic. And now we have more deaths in our hands. And so that's basically for me. If, okay, maybe, maybe I mean, if I'm, I'm those, trying to say there's nothing the new under the sun. And, the decisions and, and, and sure that, we had. This are, the that leaders are taking now, mm. if they had taken those decisions, mm -hmm. okay. Timeously, we won't have gotten to where we are now. Because at the end of the day, they've taken the same decisions. Yes. You know, they were scared to lock down yes. countries, but at the end of the day, they ended up locking them down. Okay, okay. But yet, and I agree with you completely, now the, the problem is, is with us. Mm. It shouldn't be a question of uh, can African cope or can this cope? And then I don't like this attitude of using one method to, to one solve size the problem. Fits all. Yeah. Yes, it, sh it shouldn't be a one size fits all, too. Mm. And let the world come together. These leaders need to come together and know that it's about saving humanity. Yeah, but, but I think, Emeka, you, do you get what I'm saying in the sense of saying there's nothing new under the sun? It's not like these are the worst leaders ever. We've always had leaders no. who have self-interest. Um, um, Is it that we had more of other leaders who had more common sense balancing well, out uh, yes, the Yes, I, I think so. I think, mm -hmm. I think you, you, this whole thing starts from a point of a mindset. You have these leaders who thought, you know, what, what was their entire focus was their, their own self first, their country. Take Trump, for example. Yes, and so they didn't care he's much. He's much concerned about his second yes. term. Yes, we live in we live in an age of global coordination. Yeah, diseases travel, so you know you cannot isolate a country. So um, here we are. Distance is no obstruction, especially when connecting with a kindred spirit. Time to hook up with my homeboy Chooks. Why am I calling him Chooks? Hello, Chuka. <laughs> I, I wonder why you're calling me that exactly. 